Welcome to Creation Talk. We've got a good one for you today. We're going to be talking about climate change. Hi, I'm Gary Bates, and I'm here with CMI US's head scientist, Dr. Jonathan Safady. Good day. Jonathan, let me just say that uh, when I look at Genesis 128, we creationists call that our dominion mandate. Mm. Uh, for me personally, I recognize that I'm living in God's creation. It is indeed. He made humans the head of it, so much so when we messed it up, he had to do something about it and send Christ. But recognizing that it's God's creation, I actually do think we have a duty of care over creation. It was given for our benefit to be stewards of it. Um, it's a great resource. We don't want to waste it. We don't want to pollute it unnecessarily. But for me, what I'm seeing in the modern climate change movement, I think, is a worship of nature, kind of Romans 120. Mm. And that's occurred because, if you like, we've lost that Christian or creation foundation to society and culture. And the modern climate change moving is really almost a fulfillment of Romans 120, where it says we're not going to recognize, they don't recognize the, the creation or the creator from the creation, and they're instead kind of worshiping nature as a result. So man has been relegated and the creation itself has been promoted uh, to the preeminent position. So that's by way of introduction. I think that's a balanced view. But here's what people really want to know, and I'm going to throw at you today. Mm. Um, is the planet warming or not? What well, should people think? It's a very difficult question to answer because there are a lot of sub-questions that people want to know about. But I think possibly the planet really is warming, climate is changing and has been changing. But there's a lot more to it than that. Right. So if it is warming, is that something we should be alarmed about now? Because my understanding is we've only been keeping records for less than 100 years. So even from their own evolutionary perspective of a 4.5 billion year old Earth, you know, there have been, according to them, multiple ice ages in the past. We think there was only one just after the flood. Why such a knee-jerk reaction now to it all? I mean, so you said it probably is evidence it is warming, slightly, I understand. So the question is, is it man-made and do we need to panic now? Well, that's, again, two separate questions. I mean, how much has man to do with the warming? Because, as you say, there have been warming cycles that even evolutionists admit. See, so even more I mean, in human in human times, um, they've been acknowledged that there has been a medieval warm period and followed by the Little Ice Age, and maybe we are coming out naturally from the Little Ice Age and it hasn't been too much to do with humans. But then um, carbon dioxide, it really is a greenhouse gas, but so is water vapour. So possibly humans have done something to make the planet warmer, but is it something to panic over is another question. So you and I both do a lot of speaking in churches, and what I find, I'm actually getting asked this question more and more, mm. uh, particularly in the current climate, pardon the pun, but uh, when Christians come up and ask my opinion, I feel like they're asking loaded questions. They're really wanting me to say, Tell me it's not happening. You know, tell, tell me that's all a conspiracy type of thing. You know, what would be your response well, to see, that? Well, you see, I often get this question as well, and even got it, both of us got it back in Australia too. Uh, unfortunately, some people have made it a political issue, so it's not not surprising that some of our questioners also ask for political reasons because it's a reaction to the politics that have been going on about it already. Um, but there are things that we should bear in mind as Christians. Yeah, I think we both agree, uh, whether it's warming or not, whether there is change, it's mm. been politicised. And it looks like we're going to have to live uh, certainly with the consequences of that. So, you know, one of the reasons we wanted to do this is to make sure that as Christians, whenever we approach these topics, mm. that we do so with wisdom. We're not anti-government. We're not, you know, anti uh, big business. We are pro-Bible and we have to use the Bible mm. as a filter for interpreting this. Now, so one way, for example, is I like to point out to people four and a half thousand years ago, <laughs> mm. we had the world's greatest climate change event when the world was actually destroyed during a global flood. The continents we have today did not exist pre-flood. Mm. The environments we have today did not exist pre-flood. So four and a half thousand years later, we have fully 
thriving ecosystems all over the world. So within that, it looks like the earth itself has some self-correcting ability and mechanisms. I think one of the problems is, you know, we build a condo, Mm. brick and mortar condo, six foot from the waterline at the edge of Miami. Mm. And if the water raises six inches, we think it's Armageddon. Mm. You know, a couple of hundred years ago, you probably picked up your tent and you moved it. I mean, would you say that that's one of the issues that people think the climate does not change and that's a problem? Well, you have to wonder some of the biggest uh, proponents that we got to do something right now are still building mansions near the oceans. You wonder how much they believe it themselves if they're building property near oceans themselves, which could be flooded if they were right in what they're claiming. Okay, but the thing is we, we have had a flood. That's, that's a huge disturbance of the equilibrium. And you think about what happens if you put a pendulum far from equilibrium, it swings back, goes the other direction, and then it eventually slows down. This is called damped oscillation and the earth has gone through the flood and followed by the flood there was an ice age and then you have warming from that so i just wonder if there's a very slow oscillation from that and that's why we see the medieval warm periods and the little ice age and maybe we're just coming into a warm cycle right so would you say what we have to be careful of of christians <clears throat> is also having a knee-jerk reaction and anti-reaction but by the same token, um, the secular community is having a knee-jerk reaction. Mm -hmm. And I would think that because we haven't been measuring and watching long enough in this modern era, era we have time. Um, we don't take a stand actually as a ministry on this. I, but I, as I said, I think we can agree that it's been politicised. One of the issues I will speak up about that I have a problem with mm is the language that's being used in the secular realm. Mm -hmm. uh, you, using little girls as propaganda and as tools to promote certain things, I find stomach churning, to be honest. And they use words like extinction level event occurring. Now that's alarmist, and particularly with our young people, they're mm -hmm. concerned there's not <clears throat> gonna be anything here for them in the future. I mean, if you put yourself in their shoes, you could understand that, right? Except that they believe that a century from now, the average temperature might be a degree warmer than it is today, which is hardly catastrophic. And I think young people need to realise that they've never had it so good as far as general health and welfare. And it's thanks to the fossil fuels, the energy revolution, and uh, the electronics revolution. I mean, speed of transport, speed of communication. See, these people wouldn't have the communication they have if it wasn't for the industry they hate so much. Yeah, and modern medicines and things like that that save millions of lives. Well, people aren't dying in childhood from horrible diseases that they used to, you see. So um, so how are we seeing their futures? Because of the industry they hate so much that they have a future in the first place, that they exist in the first place. So I think it's a, a huge imbalance there. We should be thankful for the progress made by science and just also be careful that we don't go too far. So, so Jono, here's the issue. As Christians then, or no, let me say, not just Christians, hmm. what as humanity do you think we should be doing about it? Well, the point is we can't do make it, sorry, the cure can't be worsened the disease because since fossil fuels have been responsible for the energy revolution that's made our society as prosperous mm. as it is, if we get rid of fossil fuels, we may impoverish more people, especially in Africa uh, where they're trying to come out of poverty. If we say you can't build coal stations, we may be condemning them to poverty. And poverty is an enormous health hazard, far more than one degree of warming a century from now. So I want to just, uh, in closing, talk about mm. one other thing. And, and I, I alluded to it at the beginning, and that's an irony that I see. Mm -hmm. So when I say the secular community, mm -hmm. let's uh, say that these are not pro-Bible people. Mm. They don't believe the Bible's history. Yeah. And so they would say, well, the Earth's 4.5 billion years old. You and mm -hmm. I are nothing more than evolved apes. And as yeah. I said, there's been multiple ice ages. Mm -hmm. There's been different climates yeah. on the Earth in which the dinosaurs thrived. There was a mass extinction event when the giant asteroid hit the Earth mm. and wiped out the dinosaurs along with millions of other species. Isn't there an irony there that if human beings have evolved to the top of the food chain, mm. uh, don't we deserve our place here anyway? So yeah. why have we relegated human beings to, you know, 
to to be less than the planet that we rose to the the top of, in a sense. Yeah, we evolved because we're the fittest. We survived, and therefore, why should we help our competitors under an evolutionary worldview? We're just the fittest, and the others, well, too bad for them. Things are becoming extinct all the time. Well, so what? That's part of nature. Why should we care? It's only the Christian worldview that actually gives us a reason to care because God gave us dominion. He expects us to use this dominion in a benevolent way for our benefit, but not to rape the environment. I mean, the worst environmental disasters were in atheism to communist yeah. countries. Yeah, and they're still suffering from it today in places like, like China and the Soviet Union where they're still cleaning up the messes. Yeah, because, again, why should they, under their atheistic communist system, care about the environment? Only the Christians do, should care. And we have the basis for a properly rational, balanced view, not uh, raping the environment, but also not worshipping it. We have the right halfway balanced viewpoint. Yeah. So uh, in closing, we'll probably do more on this subject as more comes to light. But again, so the take-home points from this are, I think we haven't been watching long enough. Mm. Uh, even if it is warming and it is possibly man-made, we have enough time. Uh, as a ministry, as I said, we don't hold a position, but we do have some articles you can look at on climate change. Type in those words or global warming on our website and you will see a range of views and perspectives on that. A balanced view is what we need. So thanks for joining us today, Jono. Thank and again, too. remember to subscribe. Tell your friends about this podcast. Share it because they're going to hear information from a biblical perspective they don't get elsewhere. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you.